There are certain issues that people on the left and the right in American politics will never discuss. And the reason they won't discuss them is because they agree mutually. The Democrats and the Republicans agree on something, so they don't want to talk about it in public debate because it reveals the fact that they're basically the same. They only talk about things on which they disagree. Turns out that the things on which they agree are the most important things. The things on which they disagree are relatively minor. We need to understand that we have been artificially divided for far too long. The global elites have divided us into Democrat and Republican, left and right, conservative and liberal. They have divided us with hot button issues like abortion and gay rights and gun control and prayer in schools. And by doing so, they have given us, the electorate, the illusion that we have a choice. When in reality, both the Republican and Democratic parties are owned by the same global elites. And on issues that matter to those global elites, they act as one. By the time you go to the polls and you put your pencil mark on the paper, punch the lever, whatever you do, the decisions are already made. The candidates have already been selected. And the work goes on there, is who selects the candidates that the people vote for? Who frames the issues that the people vote for? Voting is nothing. It's, it's all done before that stage. This left-right paradigm is a political ploy. It works very well for those who know what they're doing. We find that the Republican Party and the Democrat Party both are pretty much in the, the hands of a, of a relatively small group of people with a membership of about 4,000. It's called the Council on Foreign Relations. These are the people that are really pulling the strings in both the Republican and the Democrat Party. We get a lot of advice from the Council, so this will mean I won't have as far to go to uh, be told uh, what we should be doing and uh, how uh, we should uh, think about the future. People like Hillary Clinton know, even at that elevated position, Hillary Clinton, you'd say, was one of the big movers and shakers. Compared to the Council on Foreign Relations, she's not. She's a small fish. And she knows that she's got to uh, get the approval of the CFR. I had a friend, Nick Rockefeller, okay, who was one of the Rockefeller family. The ultimate goal that these people have in mind is to create a one world government. And this is giving me straight from Rockefeller himself. This is what they want to accomplish. Not just any world government, but a world government based on the model of collectivism. In other words, big, powerful, centralized world government. If it were a world government based on the principles of freedom and uh, freedom of choice, freedom of culture, low intervention, if no intervention in the lives of normal human beings, it might be a wonderful thing, but that's not the kind of world government the left and the right have in mind. They're talking about total world government with all major decisions being made at the top and people at the bottom being peasants, basically, in a high-tech feudalism. In a brief video introduced by the United Nations Secretary General, Boutros Boutros Ghali, and containing some exceptional footage, the connection between the United Nations, New York City, and the Rockefeller Foundation is clearly drawn. The future of this country and the lives of our children and our children's children are interwoven with the success of the United Nations. In it lies the hope of the people of the world. My father considers it a privilege to have had a part in the development of its permanent home. I'm glad to hand you, Mr. Lee, my father's check. Thank you, Mr. Rockefeller. For every single department of government you have on a federal, local, county, state, provincial level, the United Nations had an equivalent department to deal with everything. It was, it was already set up, in fact, to be global government. H.G. Wells said that the League of Nations, which was the embryo for the United Nations, he said this is the nucleus of the world governments and eventually all laws will come from there, be passed and signed into law by treaty of all the member countries. Eventually, we won't even have to go through the farce, and that's what it is, of voting in 
uh, parties or candidates because in the latter part of the 20th century and now into the 21st century, we're being trained rather obviously to simply accept rule by experts, rule by scientists, rule by professionals, and that's what they mean when they call uh, govern government governance. 2009 is also the first year of global governance with the establishment of the G20 in the middle of the financial crisis. The climate conference in Copenhagen is another step towards the global management of our planet. If people would just engage a few more brain cells, open the eyes and look, they will see the scale of fascism, no other word for it, that we are being subjected to today. I remember we had an FBI consultant on the, on the picture telling me that they can use your ADT security box microphone to, to get your stuff that's going on in your house, or OnStar, they could shut your car down. And he told me that one in five phone calls that you make uh, are recorded and logged. And I laughed at him, and then he played back a phone conversation I'd had two years prior Come on. to joining the picture, the FBI consultant. And it was like one of those, it was one of those phone calls, it was like, you know, what are you wearing type of things. Really? <laughs> yeah, so it was, it was mad can weird, we, but... So you mean they had a, a record of you from... Two years prior to me joining the picture. Even being associated with the movie. With the movie. Well, that seems creepy. It's extremely creepy. Tim, is there any way... Now, obviously, it was a voicemail. They could, they could try to get the, the phone companies to give that up at this point. But if it's not a voicemail, it's just a conversation. There's no way they actually can find out what happened, right? Unless she tells them. No, there is a way. They, we certainly have ways in, in national security investigations to find out exactly what was said in that conversation. Um, it's not necessarily something that the FBI is going to want to present in court, but it may help lead the investigation and or lead the questioning of her. So somewhere so we can certainly it's being find digitized or they can actually get that. Because everyone, people were saying, look, yeah, that wouldn't well, be possible. Yes. It's pretty incredible what you're saying. No, welcome welcome to America. The uh, there, All of that stuff is being captured as we speak, whether we know it or like it or not. Note to self, as uh, exactly. Deb Farrick just said here, yeah. First up tonight in the news, yes, the re-education camps do apply to American citizens. I understand this is shocking, but the time for denial is over. Yesterday, of course, we covered the leaked U.S. Army document that outlines the plan for re-education camps in America. I can't believe it either, but yes, they do use the word re-education, and they repeatedly refer to operations inside U.S. territory. Paul Watson has highlighted all the quotes about how the psychological operations officers are going to be brainwashing people in the camps, determining who needs to be indoctrinated, and on and on, all part of this Department of Defense document for internment and resettlement specialists. So it refers to in the document, DCs, that's displaced citizens or civilian internees. It talks about things like implementing policies, quote, within U.S. territory. What we have here is the camps we've been sold under the guise of the war on terror now being legitimized for use with American citizens as they pass the National Defense Authorization Act authorizing the indefinite detention of even American citizens without any due process. This is a slippery slide into tyranny and these detainment camps are of course the end of the road for anything we can consider to be freedom. It's based on North Korean models, Soviet gulag models, Nazi concentration camp models and more and they're really looking to bring it here. I have two words for you. Predator drones. <laughs> you will never see it coming. All collectivist systems eventually deteriorate into a police state because it's the only way you can hold it together. My friendship with Nick Rockefeller was one where we, were, uh, we expressed ideas to each other and thoughts and philosophies and he wanted me to become part of what they were doing and for me to become a member of the CFR and uh, I used to say to him, what, what's the point of all this? You have all the money in the world you need you have all the power you need, what's the point? You know, what's the end goal? And he said the end goal was to get everybody chipped, to control the whole society, to have the elite people controlling the world. They talked about Pat um, running for president, and if he did that, I would be very supportive. But he'd have to shake a label that gets assigned to people like Pat who run for the presidency, and that is that he's a tool of the rich. 
<laughs> I personally like that very much. <laughs> My father told me that's the way the system is meant to work. <laughs> You know, I think Pat's coming quickly. Soon, I think he's going to be in a position for the Trilateral Commission. <laughs> and if he shows promise beyond that, there's Bilderberg. <laughs> World control, Pat. <laughs> Settle for nothing else. At the top of this conspiracy are a, a handful of ultra-wealthy multi-billionaires in the world. Some of them have been conspiring for more than a century. Their tools are the Council on Foreign Relations, the Bilderbergers, the Trilateral Commission, and they have tools in other countries as well. Now, they've taken over our government, both Republicans and Democrats. There's no difference anymore between the two parties. They control both parties. It doesn't matter to them which one wins, because who's ever running for president will be someone they anoint. And the fact of the matter happens to be that you can't win an election unless you have enough money to win. They make sure who gets the money. And they've even written about it. There's a fellow by the name of Carol Quigley, and, um, and he wrote several books about uh, this group of people and their origins and their roots coming from Europe and England in particular. And uh, he comes to a very interesting point in one of his books where he says, okay, this is the way the real world is. He said, how is it that we collectivists, we elitists, how can we rule the world when at the same time we want to let the average person think that they're living in a, quote, democracy? And he answers the question brilliantly. He said, it's very simple. You've got to have two major political parties and they'll both have the same major goals, the same basic fundamental principles. And they'll argue with each other uh, on, uh, on the surface with slogans and leadership and style and all of that sort of thing. He said, but we will control them both. There's the strategy. There's the whole scam behind this left-right paradigm. When you understand this history and this reality, you look at it and you say, well, yes, we've got a left wing and a right wing, but they're just opposite wings of the same ugly bird. And we have our cheerleaders, you know, the news commentators and the uh, talk show hosts on the left and on the right. And they frame the debate. They won't let the American people debate the real issues. They won't let them even think about the real issues, which are, are we going to keep American sovereignty or not? Are we going to let the Federal Reserve System, which is a banking cartel, continue to run our government or not? They won't let us talk about those things. Ron Paul, uh, what's your perspective on how the, the media has been ignoring him and demonizing him? It's fascinating. I, I must say, uh, the more I listen to and the more I read uh, what Ron Paul has to say, uh, the more fascinated and, and the more respect I have for this guy, because this guy's got courage. He understands that people want to be set free from big government, um, and he's not, you know, he's, he's, he's not scared of taking on any issue at all. And, you know, I watch him. There was, a, there was one of the uh, primaries the other day where Ron Paul got 27%, an amazing figure. And yet the BBC virtually refuse to even admit the fact but he's actually contesting the race. And, and, and I understand that many conventional parts of the U.S. media have been the same. And by the way, this pretending Ron Paul doesn't exist for some reason has been going on for weeks. A new Gallup survey showing Rick Perry running second to Mitt Romney, knocking down Iowa favorite Michelle Bachman to fourth. Behind who? Fourth behind who? Libertarian Ron Paul become the 13th floor in a hotel. And it's kind of, you get a Ron Paul figure that comes along and challenges basic assumptions. And perhaps, to some extent, I've tried to do some of the same things over on this side of the Atlantic. And it's like a media blackout. That tells you there's the evidence that it's controlled. The owners of this country are no. the voters of this uh, country. You're wrong about that, my are, are, Aren't the owners of this wrong. country the voters in this country no, who no, elected they're, George Bush? No, they're Bush? not. Listen, politics, these elections are a charade. It is a charade. Oh, okay. it, is, it is. They are meant to... Well, 
I'll tell you, listen, just listen for a minute. Learn a little something. The ele elections and politicians are in place in order to give Americans the illusion that they have freedom of choice. Oh. You don't really oh, have okay. choice in this country. This is not a party issue. This is not a left-right issue. The question is not, should we have big government or little government? The question is, who should government serve? And it should serve the people. And it hasn't been doing it. And it still isn't doing it. And changing from Republican to Democrat or Democrat to Republican is not going to change that. So that's the problem. As long as we depend on the phony wrestlers and depend upon their well-paid cheerleaders in the media, to keep us focused on secondary issues, we're never gonna get out of this mess.